All right, so so here, let's first assume we have an analytical function. So we have an analytical function u of t, right? We are approximating du dt as, let me just use an example, u of t plus delta t minus ut divided by delta t, right? So that's one of the less accurate approximations. So let me use this to introduce Taylor series expansion. The Taylor series expansion is saying that u of t plus delta t can be expanded, okay, into u of t plus delta t times du dt plus delta t square over 2 times d square u dt square plus delta t cubed to the 3 factorial times d cube u dt cubed plus delta t to the fourth 4 factorial you can see the pattern right so have you all seen this before Taylor series analysis okay so one of the key thing to notice is that the behavior of the Taylor series uh, the behavior of each term in the Taylor series is different as you take delta t to be smaller and smaller. The first term doesn't change, right? As you take delta t smaller and smaller, the first term is a constant. The second term, assuming the du dt is not going to vary wildly, then as you take delta t to be 10 times smaller, the second term is going to be 10 times smaller. And the third term is going to be 100 times smaller. The fourth term is going to be 1,000 times smaller, and the fourth term is going to be 10,000 times smaller, etc. At some point, when your delta t is small enough, the later terms are all going to become negligible, right? So, in numerical analysis, we usually assume that, okay, this is a big assumption. I mean, when you go to systems with shock waves and things like that, you, you can't assume that anymore. But like, let's here, let's as, assuming we are staying in the region where the function u is a smooth and continuous okay then you can generally assume that when your delta t is small enough you can ignore the later part of the taylor series so for example if we think starting from the third term the equation is negligible then we usually write it as ut plus this plus O delta T square. All right, so basically we are saying that because everything starting from delta T cube is negligible, the whole thing, including the square term and the negligible terms, behave like they are a square. All right, okay, so this is how we write the Taylor series when my delta T is small enough, yes? Yeah, why did I stop here and not something after? So what's small enough this depends on application or depends on what my delta t is. And also depends on where this term appears in your analysis. So for example, if this term is used in here, what we get is, uh, if we plug in here, is this ut gets cancelled with that ut, right? So, what we, uh, and also what we are left with is this. So, we get delta t du dt divided by delta t, right? And plus O delta t square. Okay, so this delta t and this delta t cancels out. So, basically, the dominant, the predominant term, the, the term that leaves out is du dt, which comes from the second term. Okay, so this is when we can say that the rest can be negligible when you take delta t to be small enough, because I have one more term after the important term that comes out of the equation to serve as an error indicator. The rest is grow the rest is decaying even faster than the term that i leave as an error indicator 
So that's when I leave the rest of the terms as negligible. I mean, it's completely legitimate to carry more terms. You can write this as O delta T square plus O delta T cube, etc. But it's usually not necessary. If you plug this into some other formulas, maybe you actually have even this term gets completely canceled out, which means you have to leave more terms, right? So, so the answer to your question in short is you cannot decide a priori how long you have to keep the Taylor series. Usually the way we do it is, okay, so based on kind of just the pure guess, you leave three terms and you start doing the math and later on you find out, okay, actually I get everything canceled out. So that must mean I should have kept more terms. Then I'll go back, write down more terms and go through the calculation again. Sometimes you leave too many terms and you have a bunch of things that you see, okay, maybe I, sh I don't need that many terms and it's okay. All right. So that's, uh, that's the Taylor series analysis. So what you get here is du dt, okay, which is actually what you wanted to approximate after you plug in the Taylor series, plus something that goes to the square of delta t divided by delta t. What is that? If I have a term like that divided by delta t, what do I get? Yeah, I get something proportional to delta t, right? So what I what I see is that my du dt actually it gets approximated by something that has an error proportional to delta t. All right, I'll leave the same analysis to you. But if I approximate du dt as u of uh, t plus delta t minus u of t minus delta t divided by 2 delta t. So you are going to expand both terms in as Taylor series. And be very careful with this minus t because many algebraic mistakes can occur when you have a minus delta t in your Taylor series. So be very careful with that. But you are going to, uh, if you approximate this, you are going to get a du dt plus O delta T square, as opposed to just O delta T. All right. So, so through just doing this math using Taylor series analysis, you figure out that for some approximation equations, the error is going to uh, scale with delta T, some error scales with delta T square, which means if you reduce delta T by a factor of 10, This approximation would have an error that goes that goes down by a factor of 10, while this approximation has an error that goes down by a factor of 100. Yes. Okay. So, of course, you prefer if accuracy is the only concern, you would prefer the method that goes down at a faster rate. And in numerical analysis. There is a jargon that means that, that we call the method is higher order. Right? Higher order means when you reduce your delta t or delta x or delta something, the error goes down at a faster rate. Okay? And uh, this small number I just uh, wrote is actually a very important. So 2, this is actually 1, right? This is the order of the method. This method, the first method here is first order. The second method here is second order. So, so in, in all these methods we came up with, we can now start to label. So this is going to be a first order method. This, we didn't do any analysis. You can go back and convince yourself this is actually a first order method too. And this method, which we have seen to be better from the computer, is a second order method. All right. Okay. One thing to point out we have seen that the second order method works better for that particular problem with that particular delta t. That's not generally true. It's not generally true that a higher order method is always going to have a smaller error. 
okay it just says that a high order method as you reduce the delta t you, you your error goes down faster it doesn't mean for a particular delta t the error is smaller all right okay any questions on the order of accuracy analysis using Taylor series? And you are, you are supposed to be able to do this analysis yourself.